All right, so our next topic is relating, once again, <clears throat> moles to lab. Uh, when we take a solution in lab, uh, we need to not just know what it is, but we need to know what concentration is it. How much is dissolved in that uh, solution that we're going to be mixing? Um, and the concentration that we use primarily is called molarity. Uh, so you can see inside of that uh, word, we have moles again. So we're talking moles, uh, dealing with a certain volume of solution. So molarity is an expression of concentration with units per of uh, uh, units of moles per liter, but more specifically, it is moles of the solute, so the grams of a solid uh, normally that is dissolved in liters of solution. And that's a distinction that needs to be made. It's not liters of the solvent, which does the dissolving, but liters of the solution, meaning the solvent and the solute are mixed to equal that volume. All right, so moles of solute, liters of solution. So uh, just like before when we had a three-variable equation, I showed you how to use these triangles. If you are looking for, let's say, the molarity, you cover the molarity, and molarity would then be equals to moles over liters. If you're looking for moles, so that would be moles equals molarity times liters. And if you're looking for the volume um, in liters, liters would equal moles divided by molarity. Okay, so molarity is abbreviated with a unit of capital M. If you have a 6.0 capital M molar solution, that's how you say that, a 6.0 molar solution. You sometimes see it written like that, but we're going to use capital M, capital M, the units for molarity. Um, and again, you say a molar solution, a certain molar solution, 6.0 molar. All right. These right here are called volumetric flasks, and this is how chemists make a solution. This is how we're going to make a solution in lab. You're going to get a particular um, volumetric flask, volumetric flask. Uh, and you can see, I don't know how well the picture comes out there, but there's only one graduation on these flasks. And that one graduation is equal to the volume of the flask. And so the way you make a solution of a certain known molarity is you know how many grams are there, so you know how many moles. Um, and then you add those grams to the flask, start adding water, usually distilled water, and then mix it around before you actually add the water up to the line. You do, this is what I mean by it is not the solvent. You don't add a thousand milliliters to the line and then add the solid because then it's going to push the volume greater than a thousand uh, because it takes up space. All right, so let's try one. So find the molarity of a solution that contains 49.3 grams of NaCl and enough water to make, so there's the key phrase, and enough water to make 500 milliliters of solution, not in 500 milliliters of water, but in enough water to make 500 milliliters of solution. So 49.3 grams um, in order to do molarity. Molarity equals moles of the solute divided by liters of the solution. So I need to change 49.3 grams to moles, a skill we have. In order to go from grams to moles, I need the molar mass, the molar mass of sodium chloride, 1 Na plus 1 Cl is 58.5 grams per mole. And so that will give me the number of moles. So 49.3 divided by 58.5, and I got uh, 0.84. Now, significant digits, I had um, 4 in my volume, only had 3 in my mass, so uh, 0.843 moles of NaCl. So I have figured out how many moles I have in that many grams. So now to do the concentration of the solution, I am going to divide the moles by the liters of solution. It's 500 milliliters. So 500 milliliters, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. But the really easy way is you're most of the time going to have milliliters. The reason is these volumetric flasks are measured in milliliters. And the easy way to go from milliliters to liters is you just go one, two, three to the right. So 0 0.5000 zero, zero, zero liters. So that's going to carry down to here. So 0 0.5000 zero, zero, zero liters of solution. Moles over liters is going to give us molarity. 
um, 0.43 divided by 0.5, and we got 1.685, so 1.69 capital M molarity, or again, 1.69 molar solution, a 1.69 molar solution. Um, this calculation is basically the same thing. I just want to point out that centimeters cubed are the same as milliliters. So once again, we go one, two, three to the right. That would be 1.500 um, liters. So same thing. We have grams. We're going to change those to moles. We change the centimeters cubed to liters, divide the two, and you get the molarity. So same question. A uh, different way to word the question. How many grams are needed to make? So this is a calculation that a chemist does, uh, that a chemistry teacher does, uh, if you are trying to make a solution for lab. Uh, we, I need to know how many milliliters I need to make. So let's say I need 50 milliliters, 50.0 milliliters, uh, and I know the concentration needs to be 0.25 molar. All right, so now looking back at our triangle of our formula for molarity, moles, molarity, liters, grams is going to fit with moles because grams is something that we can measure on our balance. We can't set our balance to moles and measure moles of NaCl, but I can measure grams of NaCl. So I'm going to solve this formula for moles and then use my molar mass to change to grams. So moles, which I can then change to grams, equals, so again, you hold your hand over the moles, it's equal to molarity times liters, equals the molarity, 0 0.250 molar times the liters, I have milliliters, so one, two, three to the right is going to be 0 0.0500 zero zero liters. Multiply those two together. Uh, 0.25 times 0 0.05 equals 0 0.0125 moles of NaCl. And then one mole is the molar mass of NaCl, which we did in the previous problem, 58.5. So times... 58.5, and I get 0.731 grams of NaCl. So how many grams are needed to make 50 milliliters? Well, it takes 0.731 grams uh, of NaCl. So we would measure out 0.731 grams on our balance. We would put that into a 50 milliliter volumetric class, the smallest one listed here is 100, but they keep going down. We have 25s, 10s, I even have a few that are even smaller than that. So how many grams are needed to make? Once again, same question. This time it's already in liters. So moles equals molarity times liters, molarity times liters, That's and then one mole is 58.5 grams again. Now, the next kind of question then is, how would you prepare 100 milliliters of 0.25 molar KNO3 solution? Uh, so we have a different substance here. So uh, we need a molar mass, 39.1 for K, 14, um, 16 times 3 is 48, 1, 12, 5, 6. So 101.1 grams per mole. So the molar mass of KNO3, 101.1 grams per mole. How would you prepare it? So if you were asked to make this solution, what would you do? All right, well, we need to know how many grams I need to measure on my balance in order to make that volume of that concentration. So just like before, our triangle, moles, molarity, liters, I'm going to find moles so that I can calculate grams. Um, so moles equals molarity times liters equals 0.25 molar times one, two, three to the left, 0 0.100 0 liters. Remember, the decimal point written in there means that that is three significant digits. This one's only two significant digits, so my answer when I multiply these are only going to be two significant digits. 0 0.25 times 0 0.1 gives me 0 0.025 moles of KNO3. And then one mole is 101.1 grams, uh, the molar mass, so 0 0.0 two five times one oh one point one and I get two point now two significant digits so two point five. We would carry that further in our balance because our balances go to two decimal places. Um, but for this particular problem, that's how many grams of KNO3 I need. Now that does not answer the question though. The question says how would you prepare it? It doesn't say how many grams. Here's a sentence you can use to solve all of these. I would say I'm going to dissolve however many grams I have, in this case two point five grams 
of whatever the substance is, and here's the key phrase, in enough water to make, and then whatever the volume is of the So I'm going to dissolve 2.5 grams of CanO3 in enough water to make 100 milliliters of solution. solution. So that's molarity. Um, there are a few more practice problems here I can solve for you. Uh, we have CanO3 again, so again the same molar mass, 101.1. Uh, so um, what is the molarity if it contains 97.3 grams of CanO3 in enough water to make 250.0 centimeters cubed of solution? Uh, so molarity equals moles divided by liters, um, 93.7 grams of KNO3. We figured out the molar mass on the last problem, 101.1. 93.7 divided by 101.1, uh, and you get 0.927 um, moles. So 0.927 moles divided by centimeters cubed, same as milliliters, so 1, 2, 3 to the left, 0 0.2500 0 liters, 0 0.927 divided by 0 0.25, and we got 3.71 molar solution of KNO3. Okay, the second one, um, we have how many grams are needed to make? So now we're talking grams again. Remember, grams in our formula are really moles because then we can use the molar mass. So moles equals molarity times liters equals 0 0.500 molar times, already in liters, how about that? So 0.5 times 0.75 equals 0.375 moles of KNO3 three digits, one mole, 101.1 grams. So multiply that times 101.1 grams, and we got 37.9 grams of KNO3. If I was asking how would I make that solution, you would say I would dissolve 37.9 grams of KNO3 in enough water to make 0.750 liters of solution.